The reflection today is upon the readings for the first Sunday of Advent, year C, and the first reading comes from Jeremiah 33. Now you have to realize Jeremiah was kind of a negative prophet in the sense that he saw the sins of the people and he realized that God was going to punish the people. And they fully deserved it. Most of his prophecy is about the punishment, but around chapter 33, the chapter that we have for today's reading, he begins to speak about a restoration. And in fact, today he speaks about a virtuous, virtuous branch that would arise from David. Remember, the king of Judah was of the family of David, but the kings who were ruling in those years were not that good. They sold out Israel to the Egyptians, to the Babylonians. They were unfaithful to the religion. And so Jeremiah speaks of a restoration of Israel but it has to be from, from that descendants of David. And therefore, in spite of the fact that Jeremiah was constantly talking about the punishment that Israel, Israel and Judah would receive, here he speaks about the renewal. And in fact, in a few verses, he would also speak about a new covenant. That new covenant that would be written no longer on stone, but on our hearts. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians. Now the community in Thessalonica was doing very well in the faith. And Paul acknowledges that in this reading. But he says, as you're doing well, do even better. And that gives that sense that our conversion is a continuous conversion. We can't say I've arrived, this is it. We have to continually remind ourselves to be a little bit better tomorrow. And if we fall short today, it gives us another opportunity tomorrow. St. Teresa of Lisieux thanked God for her flaws because now she has ways in which she can grow in God's love. And so that becomes our goal throughout Advent, that Advent becomes a special time of conversion. Granted, we should convert every day, but we do need intense periods, Advent, Lent, that call us to a greater conversion because we're preparing for something. With Lent, the Paschal Mystery. With Advent, the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. The Gospel is from the Gospel of Luke. And it's very apocalyptic because it talks about the end times. Now you've got to realize that the first Sunday of Advent is really talking about two arrivals of Jesus. The first one at Bethlehem, as I mentioned in the second reading, but the second at the end of time. It's a continuation of what we've been hearing on Christ the King Sunday, that idea that the world will eventually come to an end, so we should be ready. And so Paul speaks about all the signs of the end times and the fact that the Son of Man would descend upon the clouds. Remember, the Son of Man was the title Jesus used for himself. So this is a promise that Jesus would return in glory at the end of time, and that we should always be ready for this. Now, when is the end of time? Many early Christians believed it was within their lifetime. Then around the year 1000, people said it's the millennium, so this is the end of the world. Around the 1400s, people said again, it's the end of the world because of the Black Plague. The year 2000, people were saying it's the end of the world. They were moving out to the desert to be ready for it. We don't know when the end of the world is coming whether it be the end of the entire universe or our own individual end. What our attitude should be is that when it does come, whether it's by surprise or expected, nothing left unsaid, nothing left undone. That whenever it comes, we're ready because we've always been ready. And as we heard in the second reading, every day we got readier. And may God bless us.